Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the Unify Switch Pro aggregation. A lot of you may ask, do I need this? And no, I most definitely don't. I have about four 10 gig devices that will be plugging into this, and I have no devices that connect at 25 gigs. So why did I get it? Well, I wanted it. I'll show you a closer look at the switch. We're gonna rack the switch and then also connect it to my existing Unify network. I have the smaller aggregation switch right now in place, but we'll be taking that out of my rack and putting this in. There's not gonna be extensive testing with the speeds, but if you do wanna check that out, Tom Lawrence from Lawrence Systems is doing a video on this switch and he does have 25 gig devices. If you would like to hire me for network consulting, visit www.mactelecomnetworks.com. You can find us on Instagram at Mac Telecom Networks. We also have a Discord channel and an Amazon storefront, and I'll put it in the description below. Like always, let's see what comes in the box. Take a closer look at this switch, then we'll go through some specs. I'll show you a diagram of my topology, and then we'll get it racked adopted into our controller. I've taken the aggregation switch pro out of its original box and then we have another smaller box. Let's open it up. On the inside we could see this power cord and I'm really liking the new power cords they come with. These are flexible power cords and there is a locking mechanism on the back and I'll show you that when we look at the switch. It comes with our hardware kit and let's open that up. And Ubiquiti always does a good job with their packaging. We have some screws, we have some cage nuts, and then we have some other screws for our rack ears. If we weren't putting it in a rack, we have these four little feet. Next, we have our rack ears, and then it looks like it comes with a DAC cable. Let's get that taken out. So they include one 10 gigabit SFP plus DAC cable. Now let's take a look at the switch. On the front of the switch, we have our 1.3 inch touchscreen. And then if we go lower down, we have our ports one to 28 that are 10 gigabit SFP plus. The last four ports on the switch are 25 gig SFP 28 ports. You could also see we have our reset button in the bottom corner. On the back, we have our slot for our RPS, which we will be connecting, but not in this video. I have an RPS and that will be coming in a different video. And then we have four fans. At the very end, we have our power input port and let's go ahead and put the power cable in so you could see the locking mechanism. On the power cable, we could see that there's a slot here and then on the power input, we have this switch. If we click it to the right, we could see that there's a piece of metal that goes in which will lock the power cable in. Here we have our power cable in, but this switch isn't turned to the right, so we could easily pull it out. Now let's push the lock in and we shouldn't be able to pull the power cable out. And we can't, and I think that's a great feature that Ubiquiti is adding to their higher end switches. Now let's go back to the computer and look at some of the specs of the switch. It's a fully managed layer three switch with four 25 gigabit ports. It has 28 10 gigabit SFP plus ports, and it has a switching capacity of 760 gigabits per second. We have the 1.3 inch touchscreen, which has augmented reality for management. And it also has that 12 volt DC input for our RPS. The switch has to be managed in Unify 6.1.25 or higher, and it's $899 MSRP USD. Now let's take a look at how everything is going to be connecting. This is the current layout of my switches and my UDM Pro. At the top, we have my internet coming into the UDM Pro. From the UDM Pro SFP Plus port, we're going into the Unify aggregation switch. From there, we're going to all the other devices. I have a Unify Enterprise 24 PoE. I have my UNVR. I have a 10 gigabit NAS. And then I have this Unify 16 Lite PoE, which is connecting by one gigabit. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take this switch out and we're gonna replace it with our new aggregation switch. I'm hoping that the 25 gig links could go down to 10 gigabit, but if not, we'll just have to figure out some cable management. So let's go down, get the old aggregation switch unracked and the new one racked and cabled. Now we're at my network rack. The first thing we need to do, we need to take out the old switch. I've already started shutting it down. It's safe to power off and we're gonna take the switch out and then replace it with the new one. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with this old switch. Maybe I'll do a giveaway on a live stream. Let me know in the comments below. Let's start taking this out. Now we have the old switch out. Let's put the new switch in.
and the new aggregation switch pro is now racked and cabled so most of the ports i won't be using but the ports i am you can see they're all active so it auto negotiated down from 25 to 10 or even one gig now let's go back up to the computer and we'll get this adopted. Now the switch is hooked up. We need to get this adopted into my network. So I'm going to click on devices and we could see the new Unify Switch Aggregation Pro is pending adoption. I'll click on the switch and then we'll press adopt. While that switch is adopting, I'm going to go and unmanage the old switch aggregation. I'll click on the switch. We'll click on the config wheel and then we'll scroll down. Under manage device, we're going to want to forget this from the controller and then press remove. Now our new switch is adopted into our controller. Let's look at some of the settings. Like any other Unify switch, we have our MAC address, we have our model, and then we have the version of firmware it's running. It's going to show us our IP address, the temperature of the switch. This switch has a temperature sensor, the fan level, the uptime, the memory usage, and the load average. If we click on our uplinks, this is going to show us where we're uplinking to. And this switch is uplinking to the SFP Plus port on the UDM Pro. If we look at our downlinks, we could see we have the USW Lite 16 PoE, and then we have my Unify 6 switch, which is the Enterprise switch. I also have my UNVR on the switch. It's not showing up right now, so we'll have to troubleshoot that later on. If we take a look at our clients, we could see the clients currently connected to the switch. And then we could take a look at our ports. So ports 1 to 28 are SFP Plus 10 gig ports. Let's click the edit pencil. This shows everything like any other normal port. We could change the name, we could change the switch port profile, and then we could go to profile overrides. Under the link speed, we have auto negotiation or 10 gigabit per second or 1 gigabit per second full duplex. Now let's take a look at a 25 gig port. So we'll scroll down to the bottom and the last four ports are capable of 25 gigabits per second. I'm going to click on the edit pencil and then I'm going to go to profile overrides. Here we have link speed and it's auto detect. So we could either do 25 gigabits per second, 10 gigabit or 1 gigabit per second or it will auto negotiate. We could see the different colors for the different speed. We have light green for 1 gigabit. We have dark green for 10 gigabit. And then we have this yellowish green for 25 gigabits per second. Under settings, we have the same thing as any other switch. We have our services, network, managed device, and then common settings. If we go to tools, we have a debug terminal. And then we could look at our stats, which is just our CPU and memory utilization. So that's it for me for this switch. Like I said, I don't really need it, but I really wanted it. And now it's a great addition to my Unify network. If you guys have any questions about this switch, please leave it in the comments below. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.